Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our fourth uh, Biophotonic Summer School. Uh, my name is Gabriel Popescu, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to introduce our uh, a few speakers from campus who would like to say a few words and welcome you. Uh, I'd like to say first well, who you are, and then I'm going to introduce our team. Uh, first of all, I think you need a round of applause and congratulations for actually being selected. We received about three times more applicants than we could accept. So this is for you. I think you should. And uh, here's kind of the demographics. We have uh, about more than uh, a third uh, women, which is nice, may not sound like much, but let me tell you, most departments are way below this in engineering, so that's a great thing. Um, you can see here where everybody's coming from, and I don't know, do we have the people from Austria? Two people? Would you like to stand up? All right, welcome. Uh, how about Belgium? Welcome. Canada? One, two, what are we missing? Two out of three is good enough. France, one, two, welcome. Uh, the Netherlands, hello. How about South Africa? One, two, good job getting here, welcome. <laughs> South Korea, I saw him, hello. Sweden, welcome. United Kingdom, one, two. Great. And the U.S.? <laughs> All right. Great. So this is going to be two weeks of uh, a lot of fun, but I assure you it's going to be a lot of work. So get ready for it. How many of you have not seen this website? Please raise your hand. Okay, that's good. Um, I wanted to show you the schedule quickly, not to go through it in detail, but roughly probably you have already the idea that um, the first week is basically kind of introductory uh, lectures on optics uh, and methods and some introductory biology. And then on the second week we actually go deeper into kind of hot topics, research topics. And uh, after today we're going to have uh, roughly lectures in the morning and uh, lab tours and simulations and also hands-on labs in the afternoon. And as I promised, you're going to be tired at the end of the two, two weeks, but uh, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll know a lot more. So I'm not going to go into the detail of the schedule, but that's kind of the structure. I can scroll to the fun part if you like. So Thursday evening we're going to have our banquet and uh, we're going to hand the uh, poster awards. And also, we are very excited to have a keynote uh, speaker, Paul Sullivan, uh, give a lecture on his uh, exciting research. And Friday, we actually uh, are combining forces with imaging at Illinois. Uh, Professor Bopard is going to tell you a little bit more about in a few minutes. And uh, you are going to attend uh, those presentations as well. So I think before I hand over to um, our speakers today, uh, I would like to thank all our instructors uh, who basically volunteered their time for this exciting event. So here is all of them. I think instead of me reading all the names, I think we should give them a round of applause. So these are people that are at the top of their game in the field, uh, both from our campus and from outside. Um, and also I would like to thank uh, all the organizers uh, Again, it's a long list that, as you can imagine, there's a lot of work that uh, was put into this. Um, so I'd like to thank in particular to the Imaging Initiative through Steve Bopart and also Marina Marianovic, who's somewhere. Yeah, thank you. Um, and of course, our students who you're going to be interacting with throughout the two weeks. Uh, Chris, Gulsim, uh, Billy, Brian, and Mustafa, they're also going to be uh, your instructors for the labs. Uh, finally, uh, but not least important, I'd like to thank our sponsors. If you notice, this is a heavily sponsored event. Uh, this uh, year, uh, 
We have our main sponsor from the NSF through the Nash, uh, Network for Computation and Nanotechnology, and uh, Professor Umberto Ravaioli is going to say a few words about that. And also, as I said, the imaging at Illinois, uh, Illinois uh, the Professor Bopar is going to say a few words. And we have other uh, sponsors right here, uh, including the Beckman Institute, where uh, we're right now. Uh, but also IEEE, uh, ISS, a local company that's going to give uh, hands-on labs uh, uh, in a couple of days, uh, EMB and uh, SPIE. And just to wrap it up, uh, what we notice is that people not only learned a lot, the, the, the students, but also they created uh, a network of friends. Uh, we bump into students at various conferences and uh, uh, they kind of made new connections and we'd like to keep them alive. So here are some pictures that uh, we always take. We're going to have our photo up, uh, I'm not sure when it is, but sometime this week. And also, uh, a couple of years ago in 2010, we were invited by McGraw-Hill to actually put together a book uh, with all the lectures by various instructors and uh, they made a volume out of it. This is our latest picture and uh, I would say let's make it even nicer this year. It's pretty good as it is, but we're going to have one in front of Beckman uh, uh, very soon. So here's the agenda today. Uh, again, I'd like to welcome you and uh, I'd like to uh, invite Professor Kramer, the director of Beckman Institute, to say a few words. Art. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, in a lot of ways, this is the perfect place to have this conference. The Beckman Institute represents research from 44 departments and nine colleges at the University of Illinois. So putting together engineering with uh, biology is a small part of what we do, but a very important part. This is my second year welcoming this group, and I'd like to say this is a, a very impressive group. As Gabrielle said, uh, you were heavily selected. We had three times the number of applications that we could select. Maybe we'll, we'll make the school bigger in the future. We'll need a bigger room. We do have bigger rooms, I suppose, like the auditorium that can hold quite a few. Uh, so over the next two weeks, you'll be exploring a variety of different topics in nanophotonics, uh, including optics, biomedicine, nanophotomics, uh, and, and others. Uh, You'll be delving into advanced research topics like quantitative light cell imaging, contrast agents, novel uh, microscopy, and plasmonics. Teaching you about these topics will be some of the leaders of the field. You've seen their names. You'll get to meet them and know how impressive they are, both as researchers and uh, educators. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for traveling here from, uh, from near and far. Uh, many of you are from the United States. But uh, perhaps Korea or South Africa for the furthest trip, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but have a great time here, ask lots of questions. This is a good opportunity. Uh, the faculty members who will be giving the talks are actually pretty friendly people in addition to being world class in what they do. So have a great conference. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Michael Insana, who is the chairman of our bioengineering department. Well, uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of sense of the history of imaging here at Illinois. I don't know if you guys have a sense of that. We started here back in the mid-40s, right after World War II, and it's grown phenomenally. As Art said, it, it's all over campus now. Uh, our department, the Department of Bioengineering, sort of is an outgrowth of this initiative. Uh, we grew out of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here, again, with all people involved with imaging and sensing of some, of some sorts. And we've continued to hire in this, in this regard uh, many faculty, but particularly in the area of biophotonics. So you'll meet a lot of these faculty today. And uh, I, I just want to give you a sense that these are people that are highly integrated across campus. Uh, one of the things that our campus has that few other campuses have is an interesting structure where faculty and students come here into departments, but then are free to move among institutes and laboratories to really gain unique opportunities like this one. I think the summer school came out of a lot of the collaborations that people 
both experience uh, because of this unique environment. So I think uh, you're in for a treat in the next two weeks, and uh, I just also want to welcome you. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Umberto Ravaioli, who's uh, uh, with, I'm not sure if the leader is the exact faculty lead of the Network for Computation and Nanotechnology. Well, obviously, I, I want to welcome you as well and also give you a little bit of a feel, an idea about the Network for Computation and Nanotechnology. Uh, this network is a, a National Science Foundation uh, activity uh, which involves uh, various institutions. Uh, Purdue is our uh, side lead. Uh, uh, they host uh, this uh, website called the Nano Hub. You see the logo. How many of you know the Nano Hub? Who have used the Nano Hub? A few of you. I think at the end of the, of the school, all of you will have seen it and used it for some computation and various activities. The, the Nano Hub is really a, a portal which uh, is a repository of all kinds of things in, uh, in the area of uh, nanotechnology. And, and the University of Illinois has been coordinating all the activity, especially the nanobiology area. And nanobiophotonics uh, is, uh, is one of the areas we think is the most important one. Now, today actually is, uh, is a sort of an anniversary for us because 10 years ago in this very room, uh, we started the first summer school, which was sponsored by NCM, was sort of the kickoff of the, of the network for computational technology educational activities. Uh, back then was a summer school on, on simulation of uh, electronic devices and microelectronic mechanical systems. Uh, and over the years, we have sponsored uh, a, a number, a series of uh, various summer schools, uh, uh, shifting more and more towards the nanobiology. And several years ago, we asked uh, our colleague, Professor Popescu, Professor Popper, uh, if we could put together something on uh, nanobiophotonics. Uh, as, as you heard before, this is a big strength on campus, uh, a lot of uh, expertise, a lot of facilities. Uh, and, uh, I think we, we struck it rich, but I don't know, you can see this is the fourth school. Uh, we found a lot of enthusiasm in this area, uh, uh, a lot of interest by, by the students. Uh, we never had any trouble feeling in the school uh, completely. And, and so I'm, I'm very pleased to, to be part of this uh, initiative uh, by, by offering our sponsorship, and, and um, we hope that uh, we will continue the series for years to come. Now, we, we are marking the 10th year of the Network for Computational Nanotechnology right now. Uh, in fact, the first phase is going to end, and the new phase will start uh, sometimes in the fall. Uh, it's reconfigured, uh, but the Nano Hub is, uh, is still going to be there, so any of you will find it useful and you find information and, and tools that you can use in your own uh, uh, work. Uh, we'll count, we can count on that for, for many years to come to be supported by the National Science Foundation. So welcome again. Uh, I'm sure you will have uh, uh, a great experience. I'm always jealous because uh, I, I, this is the one school I really would like to take myself. I don't have the time. <laughs> but uh, I'll, uh, I, I see some of the students here with, uh, uh, locally that I know. Maybe I'll ask questions on uh, how things went at the end. Okay? So have a great time. Thank you very much.
good morning. Uh, my name is Irfan Ahmed and I'd like to uh, welcome you both to our uh, two hats that are there uh, this morning from the College of Engineering uh, to this uh, fantastic Biophotonics Solar Institute. It has become a signature event uh, at this campus and uh, thanks to uh, Professor Gabby Popesco and, and colleagues here who are arranging these uh, on a sustained basis uh, and bringing uh, the campus together and also uh, to some of you for, for internationally. I also represent the Center for Nanotechnology here on campus and in the next uh, few minutes I'll give you a snapshot of what we call nano at Illinois and give you a perspective of uh, how some of these activities are streamlined here on this campus. So uh, of course uh, uh, this is a collaboration uh, between uh, different departments and centers and uh, we'll go uh, over Okay, so yeah, the center itself was uh, created by the campus uh, several years ago, about 2001, 2002, uh, to not only focus on the research component, but also education, and then uh, entrepreneurship uh, and uh, uh, the dialogue with industry and policy making. And so uh, when you are doing that, we identified five thrust areas uh, which would be of interest and in building on some of the traditional strengths on this campus uh, in electronics and photonics and communications, but then also agriculture and food, medical and pharma, atmospheric energy and computational uh, nanotechnology of the sciences. And we feel that uh, ag and food and medical and pharma are the areas where we could potentially have profound impact and uh, nanotechnology. But while we are talking about that, we have also put into uh, the, the, the discourse the societal implications of nanotechnology. So when you are making nanoparticles, when you're doing all of that stuff, how would it impact uh, the, uh, the humans and the, and the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom? And so those discussions need to be on the table at the same time. So there are about 150 plus uh, researchers across the campus engaged in micro slash nanotechnology on this campus. And it covers the, about 10 colleges and, and uh, different units for $200 billion of resources, both in terms of uh, the institute that we are sitting in, the Beckman Institute and several others, and, and 10 major nanotechnology labs, eight to 10 startups actually entrepreneurship uh, coming up uh, emanating from micro nanotechnology. So what we also call it from atoms to system, and these are some of the labs and some of it you'll be visiting uh, during your two week stay here. And uh, the, the material research lab is a DOE facility on material characterization, and then the micro and nano technology lab where I'm based at uh, is, a, is a fabrication facility and also does characterization, and coordinated science lab does nanophotonics, and the Institute of Genomic Biology on the south of this campus again in, in, in working on tissue engineering, regenerative medicine, uh, and also the genomic technology. Uh, and the Beckman Institute, of course, is one that is very center uh, of advanced science and technology. And the NCSA, the National Center for Supercomputing Application for Computational Nanotechnology. All of these uh, come together nicely in bringing about what uh, we call it the, the, the role of the CNSD in connecting the dots. And some of these centers here uh, are mentioned here in different areas, but I'm going to give you a snapshot of some of these over the last couple of years which have been brought in. One of them is the uh, uh, NSF, National Science Funded for, for Foundation Funded Integrative Graduate Education Research and Traineeship Program, which its goal is to create the next generation of leaders in cellular, cellular and molecular mechanics and bio nanotechnology. And again, it's a, it's a collaboration not a, a led by the University of Illinois or several other uh, campuses across the country and across the, across the world, actually. The second one is the National Institute of Health and the National Cancer Institute funded, again, a training center to creating the next generation of workforce for cancer nanotechnology, because we see that, and the National Cancer Institute actually see that, that there's a role for nanotechnology to play in elevating some of the sufferings because of the cancer. And so, again, this is a funded center, which is in its uh, uh, almost in the second year talking about diagnostics, therapeutics, and other uh, techniques which would be potentially useful uh, for, for detecting cancer and treating cancer. The 
third one is an industry university cooperative research center, IUCRC. Again, it's funded by NSF, but in this case, it's an industrially driven center. That means that the industry decide on the projects that the faculty and the graduate students will be working on with a 12 month to 18 month time uh, turnaround time. That means that there's a translational aspect to it so that you can translate these, some of the bench research into a product like that. So the, the, the idea here in this particular center uh, led by Kali Brian Cunningham is uh, they're taking agricultural derived products or pharmaceutical applications using nanotechnology. And when we're talking about all of those, we're talking about point of care sensors, point of test sensors, and all of the above. And so in this, then we bring in uh, the companies uh, for, from different uh, the disciplines uh, under the different categories in both, both agriculture, biotechnology, uh, chip manufacturers, and uh, pharma and medical companies and systems integrators and also consortiums. And this then provides a very uh, good breeding ground for new ideas and new devices and new materials uh, to be made and also to address these and also to have a pathway to more towards commercialization. Uh, the fourth center that is a collaboration and a joint partnership with MIT and Georgia Tech is a science and technology center, again funded by the National Science Foundation. This is called Emergent Behavior of Integrated Cellular Systems, APEX. And again, it's a study of the cell cell addition and cell properties uh, and seeing if uh, uh, the organs can be generated, where uh, the 3D patches can be made, and using some of the synthetic biology techniques to uh, address some of the uh, the major uh, chronic diseases uh, and issues on the table and uh, discovering new knowledge and applications. This, uh, it was a, uh, this is a uh, conceived project. Uh, it's not funded as yet. Basically, we're uh, integrating different uh, the strengths on this campus in terms of making it an integrated device which would bring about uh, both uh, in terms of uh, uh, breath analysis, uh, the, the skin analysis, skin analysis batch, batches uh, using flexible electronic systems and also lab on chip technology and maybe potentially be used in a handheld device. Uh, and this has been uh, proposed for the NSS uh, ERC. This is the fifth center that, that was actually the first center that came about uh, through this collaboration in 2003. It's a manufacturing center. So when you are making these devices, uh, the, the, there has to be a scale-up function. And so you have to have a new generation of uh, uh, manufacturing tools that have to come about. So this uh, center uh, had been targeted, had been uh, designated to actually make those devices, including some of the techniques like EJAC, uh, e and others. And so it is in its eighth to ninth year of its existence. There were two of these across the country, and this has been a uh, uh, resounding success. And now it is being translated into a manufacturing uh, as a center potentially using some of the to keep this nation competitive and to use some of these technologies to build out the manufacturing base that uh, is in the uh, US. And the sixth one that uh, the Professor Amboto has already mentioned is the Nano Hub, which is a collaboration with Purdue and all uh, and other uh, institutions uh, and also co-located here at the University of Illinois again to being the computational lab but also acting as a repository. Uh, for uh, anything related to micro So some of these events uh, are coming up or have occurred over the last uh, the, the month or so, uh, including the annual workshop we hold. Most of you are welcome to, uh, to come to these uh, annually. Uh, there are other events uh, that are sponsored by, the, by the, the, this campus or in collaboration with other campuses, including another summer institute after this biotechnics institute coming up. Uh, from July 25, and then we do an education and outreach component where we try to reach out to the general public, and that's where we have presence at the modern farmers market. We call it science at the public sphere or nano at the public sphere. So that's about it. We have and we'll have good uh, interactions with you. We welcome you uh, to this campus, and uh, to thank you, Professor uh, Professor Fresco, and all others who contributed to this effort. So I'd like to invite uh, Professor Steve Bopar, who is uh, uh, the director of the Imaging Initiative uh, at the campus. Thank you. 
Well, good morning, and I guess I'm the sixth person to welcome you today, but I think it's important I welcome you again. Uh, it's really great to have everybody here, to see so many people from around the world uh, converge here. I, um, I always say enjoy these, uh, these summer uh, workshops because I wish something like this would have been available when I was in your shoes, uh, because it's in two weeks you can really capture uh, not only maybe what you're working on for your research, but you get the bigger picture. And I think it's that opportunity that uh, is so rare. So I hope that everybody enjoys that opportunity and takes advantage of interacting with one another, with the faculty, uh, enjoying our, our campus and our area, uh, hopefully our weather, um, and uh, just really take advantage. I think this will be something that you'll remember the rest of your career. Uh, here at Illinois, we also like to think, uh, always like to think about big things and bigger and bigger things. And you may be centered on your research, and that's important, but uh, also you should get exposed to bigger ideas. And imaging at Illinois is one of those ideas where we recognize that there's a lot of different areas of imaging that all can come together. They have some commonalities, they have some uh, differences. Uh, biophotonics is just one of those many areas. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how we think bigger in terms of imaging at Illinois. And uh, uh, some of you may recognize this, here at Illinois, we have imaging on our brain. Uh, this is a statue of our alma mater, which is in the central part of campus. It is really an icon for Illinois. And uh, superimposed forces imaging data from the brain. And it's, I think it's, it's an element that uh, uh, we, we take to heart, that imaging, visualization, and the processing of image data is really pervasive in our lives. If you think about it, uh, you know, the rise of the cell phone camera, YouTube, you know, we are very visual creatures and we respond. And imaging and visualization of data is one of those ways that we can make sense of the large amount of data that we have you know, in, our, in our society and our lives. So when we think about imaging, we tend to be all inclusive. We think about the scientific uh, imaging instruments that you've probably heard of, but also things such as astronomy or remote sensing or architectural. Uh, even figures, any type of generating any figures in any of your papers is an element of imaging trying to assemble data in a unique way to visualize that. So we tried to capture this in a program, a, an effort uh, here at the University of Illinois, where we wanted to bring together uh, and develop a community of faculty and researchers and students around imaging, uh, because our strengths here at Illinois are enormous. Not just in the application of imaging, but really imaging science, developing imaging technology, and then applying these to wide areas of uh, Research. So uh, Professor Asana mentioned a little bit about the history of imaging now in, at Illinois. It runs quite deep. Uh, he mentioned some of the early works of uh, ultrasound and the bio effects of ultrasound started here back after World War II. And this has evolved into a bioacoustic research lab, which is quite large and active here. You may be familiar with uh, the Aaron Chair. Well, uh, Bill Stump is an industrial design alumni from Illinois. And uh, we also have here incredible computing resources. Uh, NCSA, the National Center for Student Computing Application, was born here in 1986. And uh, just now, just in the, in the next uh, perhaps couple of months, Blue Waters, the sustained petascale computing facility, will be uh, coming online for applications. And of course, in the area of MRI, uh, the late Paul Lauterberg conducted research here and was the 2003 Nobel Prize winner in, in physiology or medicine. So with imaging at Illinois, we recognized this and developed a series of initiatives, uh, both here at internal at Beckman, uh, because a lot of the imaging research that goes on takes place in this building, but also just across campus. And we actually developed several strategic areas to try to encompass everyone here on campus. You can see some examples of these. Uh, they go far beyond just biological or biomedical and extend into contrast agents, into visualization, uh, even into art and humanities, and again, trying to use imaging in the design process. We literally have about 150 faculty across campus, and, and like I said, apart from many other places where they'll utilize imaging instruments to conduct research, here at Illinois, we spend a lot of effort and have a lot of expertise in the fundamental science of imaging, as well as developing the imaging technologies. So, one of the ways that we actually connect across campus and, and outwards, of course, are these imaging workshops. And uh, we've had these running for several years. They're becoming an annual tradition. And just as uh, Professor Pescu mentioned, 
the last day of the summer school is you're going to be able to participate in one of these workshops. It's the one in the center, Eugene at Illinois, the next generation. We're really focusing on you, uh, the next generation of researchers and investigators, and how that's going to, how you're going to help revolutionize the way we use imaging in the future. So uh, look for this program as that develops. It'll be an opportunity for you to think beyond biophotonics and consider other types of imaging as well. Well, why do we why are we interested in imaging in the first place? And largely, we look to imaging as one of the possible tools or solutions to solve very complex problems. And we recognize that this is going to be necessary. If we just take the, uh, the example of biological and physiological networks and disease, we realize that we're going to need techniques to image structure across all these different scales. Not only structure, but also function. And imaging is one of these ways that can give us that perspective allow us to connect the pieces across these multiple scales. Now just to give you a sense of some of the research that goes on here at Illinois, I want to go through really quickly some faculty focus areas. So Professor Nsan, along with a few other faculty, are interested in these complex biological systems. So just as I showed you that the previous slide, they're actually computationally connecting across these size scales, size scales. Uh, developing models, for instance, of uh, developing memory tools. And then using imaging as a way to validate those types of models. Professor G. Pavinier in electrical engineering is developing algorithms for fast, real-time cardiac MRI imaging. And uh, Professor Brent Sutton in bioengineering is focused on the brain, looking at developing pulse sequences for MRI for both humans and even mice, uh, and looking at different technologies to be able to extract uh, useful information. We do have a heavy neuroscience uh, emphasis here on campus that combine MRI with diffuse optical imaging. And so we can get complementary information about functional activity in the brain. And they've actually been awarded a system that put an optical DOT, diffuse optical tomography system, into an MR system to collect co-registered data. Uh, Dr. Rookie is working on nuclear imaging. So using PET, SPEC, and CT to be able to track uh, angiogenesis, also to be able to look at cardiac remodeling after myocardial infarctions or heart attacks, and being able to see both structurally and functionally how these tissues are recovering. Professors Bill O'Brien and Mike Wolsey are looking at quantitative ultrasound. This happens to be a, a tumor in, in, in a mouse, uh, and being able to look at the backscatter components and how that backscattering changes and characterize what cell types may be present in those tumors. Again, Mike and Sana is applying ultrasound, not for imaging necessarily, but elastography. We understand the mechanical properties. And some of my own work, which you'll hear about later throughout the two weeks, uh, is focused on OCT and other optical techniques to develop, uh, trans and develop and translate optical imaging techniques uh, for both biology and medical applications. I, uh, turns out my wife is also here. She uses imaging as a primary technique to track stem cells in muscle and how those respond to actual and uh, closing here, some of the optical techniques. Um, Professor Peter Wong in, in bioengineering is looking at developing cell-based biosensors. And Professor Barnoff is developing infrared chemical imaging to make pathology quantitative, be able to assign different color signatures for different cell types and uh, take out some of the subjective nature of the pathology. So just to end, I think that you're at a great place here uh, we have many, many different resources, and you can hopefully be able to take advantage of some of those. Beckman really is the key central place for a lot of these activities. And you'll see things and tours later on of Beckman, including their imaging technology group, where a lot of visualization takes place. We have a microscopy suite in the basement. We have a visualization lab on the fourth floor to handle large, complex, complex uh, video and audio data, uh, and put that together for presentations. Uh, we have a, a simulated laboratory, which has a cave and a cubic system where you can really immerse yourself into data and walk into this environment where your data is projected uh, on all six sides. We have a biomedical imaging center, which is for large, uh, large humans, animals, and small animals, uh, imaging with multiple modalities. And finally, we just have a lot of outreach. We, we recognize that the imaging that uh, we develop here, both 
educational purposes, for research purposes, but also we need to get this uh, technology out to the community. And hopefully you'll have a chance to learn a little bit about bug scope or chick scope, how we take imaging to the K through 12 grades and really try to excite uh, the, the next generation. So I just wanted to, again, welcome everybody and thank you for being here. I know it was not easy for many of you to travel so far, but uh, we really want the next two weeks to be a memorable, worthwhile, so you can go back and uh, tell your professors just how, how well they invested their dollars in Sydney. Thank you again.